Hi again. Today we will jump into the world of retouching food photography and have a look how we can remove glare and reflection from glasses. Especially in food photography, removing glares and reflections has a big impact, as removing distractions will allow the viewer to focus on the main subject. Keep in mind though that this is not always needed, sometimes the reflections and the glares are a part of the composition. Removing glares and reflections can be a major challenge and in some cases it will be impossible to really remove them without any additional material. In most cases cloning will be the only option as the glares are usually very bright. So, techniques with curves and levels only work after you clone away the harsh glares and reflections. As the cloning process takes a bit of time, I have speeded up the cloning process in the video and will slow down from time to time to give explanations as we go along. So let's get started. As you can see in this image, there is a real harsh glare on the left of the glass. So let's focus on that. The best way of getting rid of this is just to use the default clone brush tool. First duplicate the layer so we don't lose our original. On the duplicated layer we will do the cloning. Before we start cloning we need to look at the situation behind the glass and make sure the cloning fits with that. In this example we need to make sure that the arm looks good through the glass. I start off by using the darken mode in the clone brush with a flow of around Depending on the situation, I change the flow or switch back to normal blend mode. At some point, I switch to the healing brush, as the clone brush doesn't work very well anymore. The healing brush works well when the colors are similar and with the clone tool we kind of taken care of that. Sometimes you can make your life a bit easier by using the inpaint tool and later fix the errors created by the inpaint. This is what I'm doing right now. Once we're done with the larger areas, it is now time to work and fix the details. While using the healing brush it is possible that you lose some color. By switching to the clone brush and setting its blend mode to color you can sample a color from a similar area and paint the color back. Ok, I'm done with the left glare. I think it looks good enough, but there are still some small things that can be fixed, but I think you get the idea now. For the right, I'm going to use a curves layer to tone down the glare. 
I don't think it would be a good idea to remove it. Having some glare at the end is what a glass does. So let's apply a curves layer and darken things up. Invert its mask and paint on the areas we want to tone down. After painting the areas, we can go back to the curves and really fine tune it to make it look natural. I made it a bit darker compared to the background as this strengthens the glass effect. Now, what started irritating me is the shadow on the left. Let's remove that in two simple steps. A selective color adjustment, on which we adjust the black, the neutrals and the whites. Invert this and paint on the shadow. Looks much better already. To really get rid of it, we can add a pixel layer and set its blend mode to color. After taking a sample of color, just paint over the remaining shadow areas. One nice trick I like to do with food photography is to add a fill with a divide blend mode usually with a light blue color, which results in a more yellowish and warmer image. So to finish it up, let's give it a warmer mood by adding a curves layer. If I look at it right now, I think the arm is too bright and whitish. So let's dim this by adding another selective color and adjusting the whites and the neutrals. We can then mask out this correction for the areas we don't want this. For example, the napkin and the shirt. Before we wrap up, I like the wood to be more present in the image, as wood gives a very natural feeling to it. So, another curves layer to darken the wood and make it a bit more brownish. Of course, let's mask this to the table. If we use a soft light blend mode and lower the opacity and adjust the blend settings, it will really look good. And there we have it, the before and the after. I hope you liked this video. In my next video I will do another wine glass shot. In this video I will explain more on the retouching decisions to give you a better understanding in that process. Thanks for watching and until next time.